Bye. Come on, boys. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dr. David Simmons. This is Silverado Cowboy Church, where Jesus is king of the cowboys and everybody's welcome. What that means is God has no respect for persons. We're glad you're here. Listen to the word today because the word of God will change your life. The Bible tells us that it's in the inspired word of God. It was given for correction for instruction in righteousness and so we have to remember that it will change our life every time we hear it by the washing of the water of the word so listen to the word enjoy it and I'll talk to you at the end yes today is multiple pronunciations so Shavuot Shavos Pentecost Feast of Weeks. Today is the day that in Old Testament the Lord God as the Israelites came out of, of Egypt, they were given the Torah. We always hear it, the Ten Commandments. They were actually given the first five books of the Bible, Torah. That's what Moses did when he went on the mountain. You know, he, he wrote through the Holy Spirit the first five books. And that's when the Lord God gave, blessed them and gave them to the people. Now, that's exciting. Move to the New Testament. The, today is Pentecost. What happened on Pentecost? It's when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us. Amen. So that we were able to understand the law. We were, under, we were able to fulfill those things. Jesus gave us the power with his death and resurrection. Resurrection. You know, let, let's put the Amen. emphasis where it needs to be. His resurrection. We're able to complete all of those things. They didn't pass away. We're able to complete them. We're able to leave a right, lead a righteous life. Amen. That's what this is about. That's, so we get to, this is exciting. So to me, this is exciting. So um, it started, there are three main <clears throat> festivals in Jewish things that were you're to travel, the adult Jewish males travel to Jerusalem for. And that is Feast of Tabernacles, which is in the fall, which is the new year, uh, Passover, and Festival of Weeks. They start counting the last Sunday of Passover, count each night. The first night, second night, 50 days, seven weeks. And um, so I'm not here to explain. This is, you know, we don't have enough time. We'd spend weeks trying to understand in all the ins and outs of it. But I give you nuggets so that you can go home and look up and see what speaks to you. But I wanted to share this one small part. Um, one of the things that is done is they study Torah like all night last night, stay up and read, read, read the Bible. And they studied, last night would have been studying about the Ten Commandments and the giving of that. Tonight they'll stay up again and read the book of Ruth. Now here's, here's where we come in with Ruth. You know, Ruth was not Jewish. She was a Moabite woman. They read Ruth because Ruth came in and she followed. Where you go, I will go, speaking to her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. She clung to, and then she went in there, and she, was, she became part of the body, the Jewish people, and the matriarch of the line for Jesus. You know this. She came in with joy. That's what they speak of. She accepted God's word, and that's what each one of us needs to do. When we accept God's word, we're part of the family. Amen. We are adopted in, and Ruth gives us that picture in the Old Testament of joining in with the family. So I want you all to go back and kind of look at that and see what you think. Um, other than that, the may, you know, one of the things we do to celebrate is we eat dairy. That's it. It's like this is the cheesecake holiday. You know, we're, like, we're moving it today. It's cheesecake. It's about cheese blintzes, and it's cheesecake, and it's, it's all those good things. But one of the reasons why they eat cheesecake <laughs> and dairy products is because we always, and Pastor made a comment about kosher, and we don't mix meat and milk. Okay, and everybody's always going, that's, oh my goodness, you're under the law, you're bound up. No, let's look at it from this perspective. They just, the, when it, the very first, when Moses came off the mountain, he's glowing. And they're like, 
we have the word. God gave us word, and we have this. We know now. We know now what we're supposed to do because they're just kind of freewheeling it. You know, really, there was no, there's no, there was no Bible before this. Um, they were going, okay, now we have kosher. He's telling us not to eat these animals and this, but we want to have a party. How do we get brisket when we don't have it? We haven't, have, we don't know how to, we haven't, no, don't know how to butcher it yet or anything. We're going to have all the cheese. We have all of these good things to eat. That's what we always tell people. It's like you get so worried about what I'm not supposed to have. The people, they decided they weren't going to worry about what they couldn't do. They knew what they could have, and that's what they, they focused on, and that's what they do today. Yeah. Like instead of worrying about what I can't eat and what I, all this, but what can't, oh, I, but I get to eat this. I get to have this, and that's where we look at the Bible. Instead of looking at things on... I can't do that. I can't watch that show. I can't do this. I can't do that. What can you do? Oh, my goodness. There's so many things that we can do Amen. that we're able to do. Focus on that. And that's the reason it's like people say, oh, we don't, Old Testament is <clears throat> that. It's the Jews and it's all that. No, look at it. It gives you a picture of today. Amen. So, amen, hallelujah. That's hallelujah. what I have to say about Shabbat. Now, I'm going to talk about tithes and offerings. <laughs> See how do I segue between those two? I was trying, that was the part that was hard for me. Um, I, I don't know. Some of you may know or not know. I'm, I go to, I'm going to school. I do that. I go to, my daughter is at CFNI this right now. I take CFNI on a line. <laughs> and so we're all in school, my family. Um, but anyway, one of my, cl- my cl- one of my classes this semester is basic Christian doctrine. If you want to know more about that, come to church on Wednesday nights because pastor has just basically been repeating my lectures on Wednesday night, which, you know, it's worked out for me because I got 100 on midterms. Yay, me. Yay. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's funny, you know, same verses, everything, you know, stories are a little bit different, but, you know, rabbit trails go different directions. But, you know, when he gives you a, it's a little revelation and it's, you think it's just for you, but it keeps speaking to you. And I shared it with Kathleen the other day. She goes, share that in tithes and offerings. My um, professor went off on a rabbit trail. We wound up having a lecture completely not on basic Christian doctrine, but on money and our finances and a thought process that he had that really spoke to me. And that was, we're going to go something about Abraham. And, you know, Abraham was before the law. He was before the books. That's the reason he was a father of faith. He was, he was free willing. It. He was just listening to the father because he didn't have a book. He didn't have the Ten Commandments. He didn't know anything about tithe, you know, until he went to Melchizedek. But one thing about Abraham was he was rich in gold, silver, and cattle. He diversified. He didn't count on one stream to gather his money. He didn't count on one paycheck. And that's what we need to remember. Are we, if we're depending on the, our Father and he's telling us what, what to do and what steps to take, then you know it doesn't matter how much that paycheck from your main job is. That's where people get bound up because if you're worried about that paycheck and your ma- and your job, then you're not depending on the Lord. You're depending. You're putting your faith in that job. That's what my so that's what he was telling us. And I thought, wow, he was saying. So if you're really dependent on God, listen to those little things that He tells you to do to earn money. You know, because it's it's like yes, you have your job, but you know, is He telling you to raise dogs? You know, are you breeding some dogs? Are you selling those? That's what I, that's what I thought of whenever it said diversify. Because as pastors, and you know, this is this is for pastors. You know, a lot of it, but it works for all of us because we're all called to be priests. Just remember that. Amen. Um, but it was like, you know, what could you do that makes an extra two hundred dollars a month? You know, then add that into your other income. All of a sudden, you know, that's your going out. That's another pair of the hat. You know, it's something. But instead of, you know, he gets these little ideas that come into your mind, and you go, oh, wait, that's it. That, that's, that, that's that extra money I needed for that trip, or that's that, or my electric bill went way up because it's summertime and it's hot. You know, maybe you're supposed to sell this. Maybe you need to, you know, if you have this dream to, you know, breed dogs, or, you know, we was talking about one pastor who's, like, raising cats. Seriously, he's like, this guy, this pastor is like, ship these cats in from Germany, sell them for like $2,000 a pop. Cats, you know, they're, they're, not everybody does dogs. I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. You know, it's like, you do have cattle. You know, it's the reason, that's the reason Abraham had gold, silver, and cattle. 
you know, sometimes the market, the gold market bottoms out. Silver's way up, gold's down. Gold's up, silver's down. Those things both don't, people got to eat. Cows are going to sell, you know? So it's like diversify. Don't feel like you're locked into it because everybody goes, I need a job. I need a job that makes this much money a year. Well, wait a minute. Maybe you need a job that God's putting you to be able to be a light to other people. And it's not $40,000 $40, more than you're making now, but maybe you need to lease out some property you forgot about because you're not running that, using that cattle, you know, using it for cattle. Somebody else needs to. Maybe you need to bake a loaf of bread and sell it to somebody. I'm just talking to myself right now. It is wheat right now. But anyway, you know, there's different things. Don't lock yourself up because God, he has got more ways to get you funding than you have ways to, re to receive it. You know, so just remember that. So there you go. That was my little tidbit that I got from class. And right now, Father God, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this week. We thank you for this season. We thank you for new ideas. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your written word. We thank you for the ability to understand it. Father, we just, we just thank you for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So fear has to surrender. So, you know, we were singing that, and I was thinking about how many times I've learned to surrender unbelief, fear, stress, worry. Because you really do, you have to surrender it to him. A lot of times we talk about how, you know, and you've probably said this to people, well, you just need to give that to God. You know, and that's a lot easier said than done, depending upon the circumstance that stands before us. But if we, like the song says, surrender it to him, it, it, just, it just really overwhelmed me in that. And so I don't know who that's for, if it's somebody that's watching online or somebody that's here today about just... Just surrender to the Lord and let him, amen, take that situation and in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wendy said it was for her. Hallelujah. That's right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. On uh, Wednesday night, I talked about uh, out of Matthew 8, um, I mean 5, 8, and nine, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And how, you know, when our lives are moved by peace, when they're led by peace, when we're in peace, right? Life is good when you're peace, when things are peaceful. Amen? And so even in the midst of storms, and, you know, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a lot of weather, and I've really been praying as I uh, watch the limited amount of news that I watch about the people that are in this country right now that are being devastated by these floods. Amen? So be sure and keep those around us. I mean, we're, I love, I'm loving the rain because the hay is growing. And I always say that. And so if you live in cattle country, you, you, want, you want hay, right? You want the rain. And we know we're going to have a good. But then I, as I'm, you know, rejoicing in that, then I see that, and I see how people are being devastated. And so the Lord really moved upon me just to share that this morning. Keep those people in prayer that, you know, we, we, we just sung. We, we pray about it. We praise about it. They talked about it. Uh, we're going to talk about it, about the blessings of God right now as well as every time we open the Word, right? Hopefully every time we open the Word, we're talking about the blessings of God because is not the Word the blessing. Amen. I don't know what I do with that. Kelly mentioned about how, you know, he didn't have the word. They, they were winging it, so to speak. But, you know, we're never winging it if we're tapped into God. Amen? Because if we're listening to him, he's always leading us. He's always directing us. And those little things, when we listen, get off the freeway, take Fort Worth Highway because of... Just did it the other day. Kelly and I were coming, I'm like... Oh, oh, I should, I should get off the freeway. No, I just went ahead and kept on. Stay, I don't know what was going on. I never do usually. There wasn't an accident. I think they just had the freeway shut down for a bridge work. But just even on those little things, because it brings you peace. Amen? You get stuck in traffic, you're somewhere, or something's going on financially in your life, or in your children, or in your home, or maybe your air conditioner goes out, or your... Um, 
well quits, or if you live in the city, you get a water bill. I understand they're horrible. Praise the Lord for wells. Amen. Don't have to worry about a water bill. Mercy sakes alive. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray about that too. And so, you know, we've been talking a lot about the different things in our community. Um, I know right now uh, with the uh, rodeo and the events of last night, um, I know a lot of people got to join in those festivities. I'm sure it was a lot of fun. Um, but being at peace, enjoying the life that God has given us. Amen. And so I also talked about living in redemption and how a word had been spoken um, and everyone needs redemption, amen? And so we talked about, you know, who are the redeemed? That's right. So people are raising their hands. It's you. You should be the redeemed. And we're redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Jesus redeemed us, right? And so in redemption, um, I had heard through one of the classes I'm taking um, that he said uh, there was a gentleman who they, he said, so what are you praying about? And he says, and he talked about what he was praying about. And he says, well, what do you need? And I'll say that. We say that. And this is where it really ministered to me. What do you need? You know, what do I need? Well, it's not about me. Bud mentioned this this morning. We were talking about what goes on in the ministry he's doing with the football teams and how it's about the ministry of what they need. It's not about what we're doing it's about what God's doing in the kingdom. Amen? And so with that, um, in redemption, and he said, I don't even pray for myself anymore because I'm the redeemed. I, I live in the redemption of the word. So the word says I can have it, so I just have it. I don't need to pray about having it. He says, I spend my time praying for others. That's all I do. I don't pray for myself. Even, and so he didn't go on to expound upon that, but that really, that blessed me to think that if alls we ever do, and Kelly had mentioned it as well, in that um, if we're looking at only how, what we can do to minister for others, how much different that looks than if we're always concerned about what's going on in our lives. And um, in Matthew 5, which is where we're going to be going today, um, as you're turning there, I'm going to be ministering out of the New King James. I should go there. I got up here, realized I had the Amplified. Uh, hallelujah. But everyone is in need of redemption. Our natural condition has always been characterized by guilt, right? The Bible says, you know, we're all sinners saved by grace. You know, there's, there's an aspect of of sin and guilt and attached to that. But Christ's redemption freed us from guilt. Christ's redemption should free you from worry. And sometimes you got to get there. But hopefully, and I know that everyone will, um, being justified freely through his grace. Amen? And so redemption in Romans 3.24 talks about that, and we're not going to go there today. But the benefits of redemption, um, one, eternal life, so salvation, going to heaven, most important, right, initially. But then there's the rest of it. So through the forgiveness of sins, uh, redemption, there's righteousness. There's freedom from the law, the curse of the law. Not from the law, from the curse of the law. Adoption into God's family. Deliverance from sin's bondage. It's in Titus 2.14 and 1 Peter 1.14. And so sin and deliverance from the things of this world, can people are in bondage and they talk about it all the time. Um, I wasn't an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. And if anybody gets offended by that in relationship to AA... Uh, one of the things that we minister through many of the types of programs is if you're always talking about that you are, then you really never can be delivered from not being there. And so with um, drugs and alcohol, I was involved in drugs and alcohol in my young life before I came to the Lord. I understand the power that drugs and alcohol have over you. Now I understand the power that sugar has over you. You can weigh it however you want, right? And so 
uh, obsessive compulsive disorders look different to different people. Amen? And so, you know, I can say those words and anybody that's ever been in a program or a thought process or ministered to about that, uh, just get over it. Hallelujah. To be redeemed is to be forgiven. It's to be holy, justified, free, adopted, to be reconciled to our Lord. It's a good place redemption is. Hallelujah. And once you're redeemed, then all the promises of the word are yours. Amen? You gotta, so you may want to find them so you know what they are. A lot of times, and that's where we, day in and day out, you come in to your life with people. Because you can point them that this is the way, this is what you're promised. Amen? And so um, on, last week, Jackie spoke, and he said um, something that just is so true. It's not the message we preach. It's the life we live that ministers. Amen? And so it's not about preaching to people. It's about living before people, being an example. That's right, Sherry. So um, in Matthew 5, I started in verse 3 on my paper. Let's see why. Eh, we'll go to the top. Verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Then, excuse me, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I'm going to stop there for a minute, and I want to go back to um, verse 3. Um, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we look at it as, you know, not being poor, not being, not being poor in spirit, but as the next few verses are going to um, confirm one another, it's about realizing that we never know enough. We never have enough of the Lord. We never know enough of the Word. We never are in a place to where um, we, we know it all. And we cannot be learning. I'm learning all the time. Kelly mentioned that she's in school right now. We're always, we should be always learning. I want to know more about what God has for me. I want to know more about how I can help people that come into my life. Um, in um, my other class that I took last week, uh, they asked us to do a vision board of uh, where we are, where, where we started, where we are and where we're going. Well, it had to do with um, the school and working with children, and the, or, but it applies to all, any area of life. And so it was interesting how everybody else, in listening to the instructions, you know, talked about the beginning of where you are. So it was talking about what we're doing right now. So whether you're a baker or a rancher or uh, you work at a school or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, or you're a mom. Um, well, they all went back to like when they were five and where their life started from and how they got to where they got to. And it, it ministered to me in that what I, I started with was my vision for the school. 
how, how the ministry happened when I was, you know, and, and the starting of it and how I didn't realize that germs were really a problem. So it's... <laughs> So I should have brought my vision board with me. I'm going to take it up to the school and post it. You know, that was my main concern when we started the school. And it was about health and sickness and germs. And I didn't even know. I was never a germaphobe. Now I carry a tissue everywhere I go, opening doors and, you know, and kids sneeze. And I'm like wiping, you know, stuff on my hand. And everybody was sick all the time at the beginning of the school. And how we developed healthier not necessarily clean because the place was clean, but how that so transferred over into the world and how when I first was saved. And I was still sick. I was still out living in the world, but I'd received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'd heard the message, and I immediately knew that I shouldn't be doing some things I shouldn't be doing. And I had people to help me to make those changes. And I think that's a big difference in the time that we live in today is that there aren't a lot of people that are willing to put themselves out there to help one another. And it's that whole, well, you made your bed, you sleep in it kind of attitude that can get us all in trouble. And it's, it, it, it can be true. I watch myself all the time. Every time I see a homeless person, every time somebody approaches me, and now that I'm going to school in Dallas, I see it a lot more than I do in Weatherford. Um, but um, when, what does the Lord want me to do? And how I use that to where I am today and how in the beginning of where I was with the Lord and how different things are here. But realizing not everybody's where I'm at either. So this is what this is, this is referring to, poor in spirit, is that we're always going to be in that place. And so a broken spirit, it talks about in, uh, a being a broken spirit. Um, I was broken before I knew the Lord, and every time the Lord shows me something new, I receive it. I don't know it all. I'm not always right. David and I were having this conversation. I would love to think that I never offended anybody ever. He says, I just don't offend people. I just, and I like laughed out loud. He goes, what? He's watching right now. So, um, but it reminds me, I have to check myself too. You know, I can get an, I, I don't want to get an attitude about stuff. If I'm out in public and things are going on, I want to be a peacemaker. Amen. I want to be a peacemaker. I want everyone to be a peacemaker. I want everyone to be nice. Amen? Everyone just should be nice. Nobody should be rude. Nobody should be upset. That's why I try not to hurry. And so, you know, I'll go places, and I tell them this all the time. I'll go somewhere, and, you know, there's a line of people, and the gal behind the register should be like, oh, I am so sorry that it took so long, or a restaurant to be seated. And I'll be like, I'm not in a hurry. If I was in a hurry, I'd have stayed home. Because that's, and it's true for me. If I have to rush to do something, chances are the enemy's going to find that spot in that and use it against me at some point. And so I just want to be in peace. If I get stuck in traffic, I just have to take a deep breath and sit there and, you know, pray. That's right. Not be worried. Don't push. And so check that. And the Lord will do that. Through redemption, the Lord gave us emotions. First of all, we were created with emotions. Amen? And so women see things differently than men do. <laughs> they hear different too, but men see things differently than women do. Men were created with the design to care for us, to be the place in the earth, and they're focused. They, we call it tunnel vision. It almost sounds like a bad thing, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because they stay focused, right? And so, and then, you know, that's why the, I hear this all the time. And so women, you know, we've got this peripheral vision thing. You know, did anybody watch the Belmont Stakes? Oh, yeah, that's good. Anyway, so, you know, you'll, they'll put these blinders, right, on horses so they can't see what's next to them. I think sometimes we all need to put some blinders on and quit looking at what's going on over here and stay focused on what we're doing. Amen? And not get distracted by all that. Distractions are the enemies. 
greatest tool. Don't pay no mind to him, right? We're redeemed. Hallelujah. Having uh, Matthew 4, having a, 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 a repentant heart, knowing every time when I step outside of a place where I know that I didn't glorify God and whatever I did, that, that that wasn't a good attitude or I might not have represented him well um, or I did something, you know, I repent. I ask the Lord, I, I just, in my ownness, down at the garden, dropped a shovel on my foot, you know. And I was like, oh, forgive me, Father. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, being mild-tempered, Matthew 5.5, 5, having a gentle spirit. Again, being that peacemaker. Being mild-tempered. I want to be that way. I'm not normally, no, yeah, I can say that about myself. I've always just sort of been kind of go with the flow sort of person. I can kind of roll with the punches, you know. And if I can't, it means that I've also put myself in a position where maybe I need to take a step back. What am I getting all fussed up about? What's the big deal? And that's why I said about being, being late or worrying. Um, I love, and Jackie and Wendy aren't here today, but Wendy comes to church without him. They live in Decatur because he's got cattle to feed and things to do, and she just she wants to be to church early. And he makes it, and that's a great relationship, and they're okay with that. There is nothing worse than fussing with your peoples to get to church. Amen. The little peoples, the big peoples, right? Not at all. Hallelujah. Hungering, thirsting, Matthew 5, 6, thirsting for the spirit of righteousness. And that's why I say, are you hungry for the things of God? I would think that, um, I would hope you are. Because if you're not really hungry for the things of, of the Lord, you need to get wet. And what do I mean about that? Maybe you get out there, do something. Step out of your comfort zone and do something different for the Lord that you've never done before, something you wouldn't do. I don't know what that's for or who that's for either. Compassionate, having a merciful spirit. Matthew 5, 7 talks about it. Being compassionate for the world. I had to ask the Lord for compassion when I got saved. Because before I was saved, I really didn't care about people per se. It was just sort of one of my things. I wasn't rude or mean. It was just life was all about me, it, you know, and whatever was going on out in the world didn't. And I had a real difficult time with Christians primarily when I first got saved. And I was young. I was only 16, so 16, 17, 18 years old because the Christians I saw as my, you know, people I knew, kids in high school and college that were going to church, well, I didn't, they didn't act like they was going to church. I'd have compassion for that because I was sitting in judgment. And Jackie talked about that last week, and it really stirred that back up in me that we weren't called to judge people. We were called to be a witness to people. And our witness is how we live. And the minute I step over into judging how somebody looks or, or how they live their life or what they're doing, I set myself in jeopardy. You set yourself in jeopardy every single time you do it because that's when the enemy comes in and he uses that. He will use judgment against you. He will qualify it in your mind. Oh, they shouldn't be doing that. Now, oh, what are they doing acting like that? And what am I going to do about it? Woo! That's when you got to back up because judgment is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. It's what Satan did in heaven. Wanting to be like God, convincing angels. So if he can talk angels out of heaven, he can talk us out of judgment. Not judging. He'll talk us into judging and put that before us. So that's always something on his end. Pure in spirit. Philippians 4, 8, whatsoever things are pure, right? Things of good report. Those are the things we should be thinking about. Those are the things that we should be concentrating on. Not the, and like Kelly said, you, they, they looked at uh, the feast. I, I call it the festival of feasts. Is that, I gave everybody handouts. You can pick one up at the door. Festival. I'm like feast of weeks. <laughs> I was like, ooh, feasting. It's a festival. We're going to eat. That's why I made spaghetti, spaghetti lunch for everybody today. So everybody stay. Um, I have lunch for everybody. And uh, because that's what I do. 
I love to cook and I love to feed you guys. And so when, I, when we looked at Shabbat and I was like, oh, I should feed everybody because that's a festival to me. Hallelujah. I don't have cheesecake. I don't think Kelly brought hers either. You know, I may have some cheesecake in the freezer in case somebody doesn't like what I have for dessert. Um, hallelujah. But those are the things that we want to think on. Um, Matthew 5, 9, spirit of wisdom and meditation. I am always asking the Lord for wisdom. When I talk about the blessings of God, it is how wise I am when I listen to him because of how wise he is and not looking at my own self for how am I going to fix this problem, but really, Lord, I have the mind of Christ. I am going to listen to, for you. I'm going to wait on you. And Matthew 5, 10 through uh, 12, long-suffering and a forgiving spirit. Let me see, I have a note on that. Where me find that one? Hallelujah. Each, uh, this is called the Beatitudes, by the way, for those that don't know what this, this whole thing was about. And it was really, when he gave this message on the mountaintop, it, he was really talking to the religious people in their lives and how it was about what they were focusing on. The kingdom of God looks at things differently. Um, when people talk about being blessed, and we talk about this a lot, a lot of times people only refer to that as a financial. You're blessed financially. And that's a good thing. We do want to be blessed financially. But it's so much more about that. It's really what Jesus was trying to put out there to the Pharisees as well was it wasn't about the financial reward and gain, but it was about the hope and the joy and the deepest form of happiness that Christians can have even in the middle of adversity. That he was never going to leave us, he was never going to forsake us, that there was always going to be an answer that we as Christians through redemption are guaranteed. Amen? And so um, Jesus said that the kingdom uh, is organized differently, is how he, he phrased it in these scriptures, uh, than the worldly kingdom. In the kingdom of heaven, wealth and power and authority um, are unimportant, even though that's important to us. It's not what they look at. Kingdom people seek different blessings and benefits, and they have different attitudes. The world is selfish and self-centered and thinking. The world outside of Christ is all about themselves. And that's why I said I could really relate, even as I went back through these scriptures, and the Lord really showed me, because I, I always thought, oh, I was never like that. But then he reminded me of really, even though I wasn't what I would consider self-centered, how the enemy still is always pointing to us how is this making you feel? What's going on in your life? How is this going to affect you? Versus how is this going to affect the world? And that went back to the floods and the waters that are going on in our country right now. And so even I realize that I still can fall into that. And um, attitude is everything. Your attitude towards uh, service is an example to, uh, to others. The fact that uh, he says, and I'm going to close with this, the one scripture, and I kind of dance around it usually about being um, happy that you're being persecuted. You have to have a thick skin to serve the Lord. You really do. Because um, the enemy, if you're doing anything of any benefit for the kingdom, the enemy is giving it his all to make your life as miserable as possible. Mentally, physically, emotionally, in the natural. And the more you're doing for the kingdom, the greater the attack will be. And that doesn't bring me great joy. But what does bring me great joy is I'm not subject to it. So used to when I heard the scripture, uh, and they said that teachers will even be held in a higher accountability, totally different scripture than that. And so a lot of times people don't want to step out there for different reasons, but once you step out there, 
the Lord will bring that to you and protect you from the things that the enemy's doing. So you'll see the things that the enemy is doing, but you won't be affected by them. Does that make sense? And so if you're being affected by them, I just want to encourage you today to step back and step into whatever it was that got you there and let the Lord work it out. Hallelujah. You know, it's muddy. Get some new mud boots. Amen? Recruit somebody to help you. I think one of the greatest things that the enemy also uses against a lot of people in these days is um, you got to do it on your own. Don't do it on your own. You can do it with Jesus, but also do it with people. People are here to help you. Reach out to them. Stay in touch with them. Don't be a lone wolf. Diana's smiling at me over there. Huh. Huh. Yeah. She'll call me. She would have called me later and called me on that one anyway. So we love you. We love all of you. And we are so blessed that you're a part of our lives and a part of the ministry here. And... Um, you know, I think there's a few people in here that got a message this summer. You ought, to, you ought to call me and say, hey, I got a message for the church. Preach it. I'll be stepping out there. Who do that? Aside from those that do, you can't raise your hand. <laughs> Inside, stand up. You may not stand up on the outside, but you really do. Get up here and share something that the Lord has done in your life. That message only, may only be five minutes, and you know we like that because then dinner's quicker, right? Just say. <laughs> but it's important that we hear from you. It's important that the people on the Internet and the people that are here, because it's your lives that are the witnesses. We can get up here and preach a message and deliver it. I love to do it every Wednesday and every Sunday, but how much more powerful could your message be? to change a life. Amen? Father, we just give you all the glory and the honor. I thank you, Father, that everybody that is here today is strong in you, that you have strengthened our, our emotional, social, physical bodies, that even in the areas where we're weak, Father, we know you're strong. We thank you that, that you are renewing our strength and our bodies and our eyes like the eagles, Father, it says in your word, that we will soar above and not be subject to the things below. Glory to God. I'm, we're going to close with a song. I, if you'll put that on, we're going to dance on the devil this week, you guys. So if you got something going on, so everybody stand up. Hallelujah. I gave you the words if you want them. If you didn't get them, you can get them on the way out. So take just a moment, and then afterwards, um, stay in fellowship with us, if you would. Hallelujah. But it says, I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the chains that are laying on the ground. I'm dancing out of the dark. I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes a weapon, and I'm here to fight. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So go dance on some graves this week, folks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. We are going to learn this song, by the way, at church. Can't you see Roddy playing that? I'm telling you, it's powerful. I hope you've listened to the word uh, during this service so that you can have your life changed. You're, you'll see how the DNA of your entire life is about to change. Also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life. Paul says this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made 
unto salvation. So it's very simple to do that. All I have to really do is say, Jesus is the Lord of my life and I believe that God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Paul said. Many times we have people pray a prayer uh, so that we know that we've drawn a line in the sand and we've let everybody know that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. So I want to do that with you right now so that you can literally say, today is the day and whatever time it is, wherever you're at watching, you'll know that you've had a change in your life. So say this with me. You can bow your head and close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open. Uh, and uh, I, I always love what uh, Oop Schroner, who is a prophet of God, said. He said, if you're drowning in a swimming pool at the Holiday Inn, you wouldn't want anybody to close their eyes. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're literally drowning in a swimming pool of sin someplace. So say this with me. Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for me. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of them. And Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And I commit today that I will live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just did that, then what you just did is you invited Jesus Christ to live in your life, to be the Lord of your life, and you're going to see a complete change in every area of your entire life right now. If you've watched this broadcast, you also know that uh, what we've talked about at different times uh, through different broadcasts is, is finances. If we, the Bible tells us in Luke 6, 38, that if we give, that he'll give back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over to make room for more. Then it says, uh, right after that, and this is Luke 6, 38. Then it says, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So if you become a covenant partner with us today, there's many things that we do for outreaches here out of this church and out of the ministry. Not only here in Weatherford, Texas, but all over the country and all over the world. We uh, have rodeo events right here in the arena where we have, uh, he paid your fees. Simply means that nobody pays to, to enter. They come, we have a devotional, it becomes an outreach opportunity. And we do that in rodeo arenas, horse show arenas, and roping arenas all over the United States. We drill wells and have uh, crusades in Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Uganda, and Tanzania. And by doing each one of those, uh, you become, and becoming a covenant partner with this ministry, you become a part of those outreaches. You take part in the reward in the end time, as well as you get back pressed down, shaken together, and running over to make room for more. Because you're a covenant partner, and this is good ground. Bible tells us in another place he gives back. Uh, this is in uh, Mark, the 10th chapter. It tells us that he gives back to us some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Well, this ground has been worked. It has is, is been fertilized. And, and I would expect a 100 fold return on that. So there's a uh, website that you've seen. Do two things. One, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, let us know at that website address and we'll send you some information so that you'll be able to walk that walk and succeed in life in your new Christian life. Also, if you give, there's a donate button right there. If you press that donate button and give, that seed gets planted into good ground, and it comes back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Kathleen and I pray every day over every partner of this ministry. So I want to make sure that we're able to pray for you and, and let us know the things that you may have need of in life so that we can bring them before the Father. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you. We love you, and Jesus is Lord.